everyone, this is Father Rowan Lopez Rebustilio from the Diocese of Sorsogon. Currently, I am teaching theology courses at the Loyola School of Theology and St. Vincent School of Theology. I am happy to be part of this international study organized by the Loyola School of Theology at the Neo de Manila University. I can say that this latest encyclical of Pope Francis, entitled Fratelli Tutti, is something that is very close to my heart because my doctoral dissertation is about contemporary migration, specifically on the possible contributions of Filipino migrants in Western European countries, not only in the economic sphere, but also and most especially in the religious and cultural realms. Fratelli Tutti is the third encyclical of Pope Francis. In this encyclical that he signed on October 3, 2020, he continues to offer us his distinct social teaching in the spirit of his namesake, Francesco. Just like the Laudato Si, his encyclical that focuses on the issue of our relationship with Mother Earth, Fratelli Tutti his call for the recognition and living out of our common bond as siblings, regardless of religio-cultural backgrounds, is also taken from the roster of literature penned by the Poverello from Assisi. In this 287-paragraph document, clustered into eight chapters, Pope Francis articulates the current state of our global home, its lights and shadows, especially what hinders the flourishing of universal brotherhood and sisterhood. At the same time, he expresses his hope in the restoration of the bond of love shared by siblings, peace and unity, by way of dialogue among different nations and religious traditions, which is a true reflection of the interreligiosity once lived by St. Francis of Assisi. Social friendship and fraternity are the common paths that everyone must take toward a more just, more humane, more peaceful global community, according to Francis. It is a genuinely better world, a world that gives no place to globalized indifference or radical individualism, a world that shuns the menace of war, which is nothing but a negation of all rights, whether it is hypothetically justified or otherwise. Fraternity must not only be held as a powerful slogan or mere lip service, but must be concretized, made tangible by promoting better kinds of politics that give priority to the common good and the centrality of the dignity and well-being of every human person where no one is left out or alone and lonely because everyone belongs to the single human family where everyone is a brother and a sister. Well, the topic which is assigned to me is the fourth chapter of the encyclical Fratelli Tutti, entitled, A Heart Open to the World. On paragraph 131, Pope Francis underlines the notion of full citizenship. He thus unequivocally states, and I quote, For those who are not recent arrivals, and already participate in the fabric of society, it is important to apply the concept of citizenship, which is based on the equality of rights and duties under which all enjoy justice. It is therefore crucial to establish in our societies the concept of full citizenship and to reject the discriminatory use of the term minorities, which engenders the feelings of isolation and inferiority, 
Its misuse paves the way for hostility and discord. It undoes any successes and takes away the religious and civil rights of some citizens who are thus discriminated against. End of quote. Well, to put it succinctly, rights have no borders. Human rights is definitely universal in scope, regardless of one's origin and state in life. Well, just like the right to live with dignity, it's not subject to one's citizenship status. No one should be deprived of this. Two most potent tools, according to Pope Francis, to overcome the darkness that threatens our common home and common family are solidarity and benevolence. Genuinely desiring good for the other, which does not subordinate the value of people to any ideologies, which is also a firm conviction to combat the horrors of poverty and inequality. Hence, he underscores the importance of ethics of international relations, which provides everyone, citizen or migrant, a fair playing field to enjoy the goods of every country or territory. Corollary to this, therefore, is the subordination of the natural right to private property to the higher value of universal destination of created goods. Obligations to pay any foreign debt, Pope Francis surmises, should not lead to the further deterioration of the poorest countries. Now, going to the main core of chapter 4, Pope Francis directs our attention to the plight of migrants in our contemporary global society, which is also the locus for the concretization of solidarity, of care for our brothers and sisters. Migration is definitely an international concern which calls for a coordinated and collaborative global response. The Pope Francis appeals to all stakeholders, especially the civil authorities, to create viable economic and social infrastructures in the countries of origin to mitigate, if not to eradicate, unnecessary migration. This, however, must not be used as a reason to prohibit anyone from seeking better life elsewhere, because it is a right that is inalienable to any human person. On the part of the receiving countries, Pope Francis is imploring that they maintain the right balance to ensure that the rights of citizens be protected while guaranteeing due hospitality and necessary assistance for the migrants, most especially to those who are fleeing great humanitarian crises. The concrete ways to enshrine this in the global village, therefore, that we live in are the following. Number one is augmentation and simplification of granting of visas. Number two, opening of the so-called humanitarian corridors. Number three, provision of opportunities for employment and training. Number four, promotion of family reunification. Number five, safeguarding the rights and welfare of minors. Number six, assurance of freedom to every religious tradition. And number seven, advancement of social inclusion. Undue considerations of the reality of migration must not be perpetuated. There must be an end to xenophobia and vilification of migrants. Hence, he encourages everyone to look at migration with a fresh eye as an opportunity for genuine dialogue and fruitful exchange of gifts, economic, religious, cultural, and the likes. This phenomenon is an occasion for growth, an avenue for enrichment, 
and a chance for showing our care for strangers. Because in one way or another, we have been strangers for at least once in our life. Certainly the Pope is very much aware of the tension, real tension, between globalization and localization. In the words of Pope Francis, local narcissism that is happening in our present world. But for him, this must not discourage or dissuade anyone from pursuing solidarity and the common good while maintaining a healthy appreciation and promotion of one's own culture. Thus he avers that each particular group becomes part of the fabric of universal communion and there discovers its own beauty. All individuals, whatever their origin, know that they are part of the greater human family without which they will not be able to understand themselves fully. And that's from Fratelli Tutti 149. For him, a culture that is healthy is nothing short of hospitality, welcoming others with wide open doors without relinquishing one's own identity and authenticity. Here, he reiterates what he said in Evangelii Gaudium. And I quote, we constantly have to broaden our horizons and see the greater good, which will benefit us all. But this has to be done without evasion or uprooting. We need to sink our roots deeper into the fertile soil and history of our native place, which is a gift of God. We can work on a small scale in our own neighborhood but with a larger perspective the global need not stifle nor the particular proof barren end of quote and the model that he deems most appropriate in this regard the pontiff suggests is the polyhedron which expresses the essence of a balanced relationship between the universal and the local and i quote the whole is greater than the part, but it is also greater than the sum of its part. Well, prior to teaching Migration Theology and Catholic Social Teaching at the Loyola School of Theology, I had the privilege not only of doing a serious doctoral research work on migration, but actually ministering to the Filipino migrants in the Filipino chaplaincy in Belgium, as well as some occasional pastoral and academic work in migrant communities or some international communities in The Hague, Netherlands, in France, in Spain, in Greece, and in the United States. Generally, I can say that most of the migrants, especially those who are given the legal status, experience some level of hospitality and protection from their host countries where they find jobs albeit in Europe, mostly in the domestic setting, unlike in the United States of America, where professional white collar jobs held by Filipinos are a dime a dozen. They can easily access social security and without difficulty express and practice their religious traditions. But of course, full integration is still a difficult undertaking, a goal yet to be achieved. Some of them are still subjected to various forms of discrimination, such as racial profiling, based on the color of their skin and religious background, especially those who are undocumented. Well, chapter 4 of Fratelli Tutti, I believe, fortifies the advocacy of well-intentioned individuals and institutions to champion the rights of migrant people like the Episcopal Commission on Migrant and Itinerant People of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. Indeed, it gives us a clear direction on the concrete steps to foster fraternity and solidarity that allows everyone to participate and benefit, including the migrant and itinerant people. Likewise, the movement is 
spearheaded by the Philippine ambassador to the Holy See, Her Excellency Grace Princesa, that promotes migration and development, where both the civil and religious sectors are pulled together to collaborate on bringing about the needed changes in outlook, policy, and programs to ensure that migrant people and their communities will not only be protected, but also are given the right conditions to attain their full potentials. Thus, I hope that this call of Pope Francis will not simply fall on deaf ears, but be taken into serious account and applied in tangible terms. So one day, we will have a better, more sustainable world where fraternity and solidarity are enjoyed and celebrated by everyone. Thank you very much. My name is Father Walter Hernandez. Diaz. I'm from Argentina, working in Rome. And today I will present to you Fratelli Tutti in a personal experience with the pastoral care of migrants. For this, I, I prepared three points that I would like to share with you. The first point is presenting my religious congregation. I belong to the congregation of missionaries of St. Charles, known as the Scalabrinians. We were founded by John the Baptist Calabrini, who was the Bishop of Vicenza, which is a place located in the northern part of Italy. And during the time of this Calabrini, Italy was experiencing a very difficult crisis. So, so many people couldn't find jobs and could not find the means to feed their families. So they were obliged to, to migrate to other countries. Many people moved to the United States, some others went to South American countries like Argentina and Brazil. And then uh, Bishop Scalabrini thought that founding a congregation, the missionaries can accompany uh, the journey of faith of these displaced people. So he founded the congregation the 28th of November, 1887, with the charism to attend and to care for the Italian immigrants abroad. Eventually, uh, following the signs of time, the congregation extended this charism to all migrants, refugees, uh, seafarers and people on the move. Fratelli Tutti, in chapter 4, invites a culture to open their heart to the whole world, giving special attention to the most vulnerable people of human mobility, like uh, migrants, refugees, displaced people, and those who suffer trafficking. Pope Francis also invites us to, to realize that we are all brothers and sisters. We are fratelli tutti, and we have to take care of each other. We have to be sensible to the need of our brothers and sisters. And we have also to take care 
our common home. The second point that I would like to share is the ideas that Fratelli Tutti provides for the pastoral care of migrants, which Pope Francis already presented in the Forum of Migration and Peace that was organized in Rome by the Dicastery of Promoting the Human Development, uh, the four verbs of migration, to welcome, to protect, to pr promote, and to integrate the migrant community into the local church. So, which is an invitation to the whole church to work with responsibility towards the migrant, uh, showing to them that they are welcome in the community like a good Samaritan, we have to welcome them, to accompany them, to protect, to promote the uh, migrant community in the local community. In my own experience, after I was ordained priest, I was assigned in the European and African region of our congregation. And my first four years, I work in our center of migrants in England, UK. And then for four years, I was serving, uh, helping in the serving of the Filipino, Portuguese and Italian community. So after these four years, I was transferred to Rome, where I'm um, currently helping in the Spanish community. And at the same time, I'm undertaking the course of psychology at Agricola University. So the nature of our work with the migrant, specifically the job I'm doing in assisting uh, the chaplaincy of uh, Latin American communities that are the Spanish community and the Portuguese community around the city, we try to make them feel at home in our community. We welcome them so that they can feel accepted, they can feel recognized, and we build a communion between the different groups so that they can feel at home and they can express their culture, their traditions, their popular devotions, which are a wonderful uh, enrichment to the local church and to the communities where we work. For instance, uh, during the year we accompany the different groups in celebrating the patron saints, their procession, their folklore, and which are really a wonderful experience. Then, uh, as Scalabinian congregation here in Rome, we accompany the chaplaincy for the Filipino community, which is located in the Basilica uh, di Santa Pudenziana, under the care of Father Ricky Hente, which is also a missionary Scalabinian, missionary Scalabiniano. Then uh, we have uh, Father Luis Gabriel, the chaplain now, the Latin American community where I assist and give a hand especially to the different communities around the city, Spanish speaker community and Portuguese community. Together with this uh, two chaplaincy, we as Calabrian have a house, a shelter for refugees and migrants. The name of the house is Casa Scalabrini 634 that has the the aim to promote a dialogue, a cultural dialogue, uh, welcoming, protecting and promoting the migrant community and help them to integrate in the local church. As a Scalabinian, we also uh, have the social work with the migrants through the different uh, agencies and institutions that we have to help to promote and protect the migrant. For instance, we have the agency that they help us to, to assist the social courses for the migrants. Uh, for instance, when some migrants arrive in Italy uh, through the Umilitas, uh, they, can, they can study the language, they can uh, take some courses that they can work in the community. Uh, we have a barber course, we have a course for cooking, uh, a course for uh, tailoring. 
so that they can slowly, slowly, step by step, they can get some job and enter in the in the in the community. Let's say uh, having a good work that they can provide uh, a good support to their family. We also have the CIMI, Scalabrini International Migration Center, then the Center Stati Emigrazione, which are the the other uh, groups and associations uh, that we have that support our pastoral care with the migrants. In working with the migrants, we also listen to a lot of stories and we know that to listen with migrants is, uh, is difficult sometimes no? because we, we experience the struggle that they have, the suffering that they experience and this also uh, moves as a Scalabrinia to, to try to do our best in helping them. Um, there are various reasons why migrants leave their country. Some of them uh, are looking for a better opportunity to their family. Some of them escape from danger that they are facing. Some others, they, they particularly are obliged to move so that their families can get a good education or, or they can support in a better condition their families. So even in this process of helping the migrants, the different groups the, that we have as a communication, we try to accompany also the spiritual support in counseling them so that they can integrate and they can feel at home in the local church. The last point that I would like to share with you is the, the realizations that I get in working with migrants as a young priest. And I can truly say that in working with my own people, uh, I am a rich. Uh, I am a rich as a priest, I am a rich uh, Christian, I am a rich uh, as a church, knowing that migrants are a gift that bring through their diversity, through their color, through their tradition, through their popular faith, uh, a value for the universal church. So all of us, we are one family, no matter which nationality, which language, which color, we all one family. We are all fratelli tutti. And I believe that working with migrants, I am able to be enriched with the experience I receive from the migrant, the strength that they have in supporting the family, the struggles, the difficult situation that they experience, but the strong faith that they have and uh, the importance for them to be an agent of evangelization to their fellow brothers, to help their countries in moments of difficulties and struggle, calamities. All these examples, all these show of love, appreciation, show of good Samaritan, even for the migrant itself, help me as a young priest to improve my ministry, to find means of how to be creative in my work with the migrants. Fratelli Tutti said that migrants are a gift if we integrate them into the society, into our community, into our church. And truly, I say that Fratelli Tutti are teaching us to open our heart to the migrants, to the less vulnerable people in human mobility, the migrant refugees, displaced people. So we all invited to open our heart. We are all invited to enlarge our heart so that our heart has no boundary and we can embrace every culture, every people, every migrant that come to our community, our church. We are all Fratelli Tutti. Thank you very much.